Alright, so I'm going to do a Samsung S4 power switch repair. Uh, the guy said it's stuck in the on position. So in order to test it, um, this one is off, so it should beep. And then, this is not supposed to beep, but what's going on is that, and it's not beeping right now, but if you kind of just touch it slightly, it just starts beeping. It's only supposed to start beeping when you push on the thing. So as you can hear it beeping. See, so basically, it's stuck on the on position, so we're going to replace this thing, and uh, I don't think it's going to be too hard. Yeah, it shouldn't be too hard to do, so. I, I can probably use hot air, but I'm not going to, uh, because I don't, there's a connector on the other side that I don't really want to damage. And I may end up using hot air, who knows. Anyways, I'm going to try to use brute force, though, to jimmy this thing. And it's almost always the the um the ground planes that we have problems with. So I may end up having to use it actually. Yeah, I, I think I'll probably will use it. Hot air. Uh, 400 degrees and 17, 400 degrees Celsius and 17. So I'm just gonna try to blow this way so that I don't mess up that connector on the other side. I'm actually gonna add some. Low melt real quick. Low melt solder paste to the uh, to the ground joints. All right. Yeah. And this should just come off pretty easily after that. I'm gonna use my my heavier tweezers. I'm gonna turn my heat up. Something happened to my quick. It's like requiring a lot more heat these days, so it seems to work better at 416. I think I even need to go even a little higher than that, actually. Yeah, I see it melting now. 400 is not working too well. Alright, so there you go. It just pops right off. Alright. Next thing you do is just remove all the. This is an old, old uh, device, so I don't. But I guess people still want to repair this thing. Okay, not a whole lot to it. I'm just gonna actually kind of poke through it. I could probably go to the other side and see what's. Oh, there it goes. That should be good enough. Artificial holes. Okay, so we're good. Uh, let me get my new connector out. Hmm. Let's get that old stuff off first. All right, and now let's get the new switch on. Uh, that is the wrong way. So I'm not going to use heat now, um, but I am going to smooth that out a little bit, otherwise it's not going to sit flush. So.
So I'm just going to wick it again. And then that happens again, so. So let's see if we can kind of get this thing working right. I think maybe I'll just be a little more careful when I use this wick now. I'll just go from the outsides. Probably helps if I'll use clean wick too. <laughs> All right, that should be good enough. Uh, my connector fell though. All right, so just make sure this sits flush. Uh, I mean, there's really not a whole lot to this. All right, so that's pretty good, and then. Let's get the um, ground points first, because need to make sure it sits flush. So let's start with this side. So I'm just going to push down on it, make sure it sits flush, and then I'll do the same for the other side. Make sure you use plenty of flux. So I'm just gonna really use some force to push it down, and make sure it sits flush. Otherwise, it's not gonna like. Okay. All right, so that's good. And then I'll just not a whole lot to this right here. More flux. And I think I'll just kind of like do this. Although I really don't need that much. Okay, one shiny joints. I think I need a little bit more. I think I might have. I think I did it wrong, actually. I mean, is there a lead on this that connects it? Or I don't understand. Or is that supposed to be connected right there? <laughs> I think I did it wrong. Hold on a sec. Yeah, that's not supposed to be touching. I think maybe. Hold up. I don't quite fully understand how this works. The switch works. Probably should have paid a little more attention to this stupid thing. Uh, where did it go? There it is. Oh, this is the old switch. Hold on a second. Where the hell did my new switch go? Where did my switch go, man? How does that even make sense? Oh, there it is. I swear to God, I lose more stuff. Okay, so this is actually not supposed to be touching, actually. And then the leads for this is. Put up. I don't get it. Think about this. So this is ground, and then that's supposed to be touching that, that's supposed to be touching that, but not that. Okay, makes sense. So I think I botched it. <sighs> so that I can fix it without redoing everything. I don't think I need this anymore.
All right. So, okay. Now it's not touching. Okay. It doesn't seem like it's soldered, but maybe it is working. Uh, let's, let me just take a look real quick. Okay, I could probably do a little better job of that right there. So basically you just kind of get it in a little bit. Alright. I don't think I need my holder for this. All right, I think we're in business now. Yeah, it's perfect. I'm actually going to clean this side up a little bit too. Gosh, just jab my finger. Damn it. In my tweezers. Definitely drew blood. Okay. It's the old one. Let's get back in the package. All right, so this is their new one. I'm gonna send this back with it because they sent the switches. All right, we're done. S4 Galaxy power switch repair. I think I probably spent more time than I needed on it. All right, thanks for watching. So I just want to say thank you for watching this channel. And I wanted to promote our online micro soldering course. Um, we have it hosted at udemy.com, and it's at this point it's four hours of video instruction. Um, the reviews are pretty good, um, and we talk about everything from the basics uh, of of an iPhone Logic board, um, and then we have a section on ZXW tools. Um, we have a little section about how to set up your hot air rework station, your micro soldering um, station, and how to use diode mode. Uh, the third part is the three most common repairs, which is no touch, no backlight, no charge. And the fourth part is all about data recovery. So 
Um, if you go through our website, it's a hundred bucks. And some people say that learning online is not the best way of doing things, or you can't learn microsoldering online. I beg to differ. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I started watching YouTube videos when I first started about three years ago, and that's how I learned it. Um, and not only that, but you know, you go to a live course. Some people like live courses, but not everybody has three thousand dollars to spend on a live course, right? So, um, and then yes, you're right. You can go to YouTube and watch all these videos, um, but you're not gonna. When people make these videos, they don't go from A to Z. They usually start from somewhere in the middle because they assume that you watch something earlier on, or one of their earlier videos. So this course is all-encompassing. It has everything from A to Z um, to help you get started in microsoldering, and we are adding stuff um, on a weekly, maybe monthly basis. And we're, we're gonna just gonna keep adding to this thing. And um, so if you want to get started, just I mean, you could also take a class, but, uh, you know, to get your feet wet, I think this is the best thing to do right here. And I vouch for it. Um, thanks for watching the video. I was also going to say, um, in order to buy it with a discount, $50 discount, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, and then it's going to be the first item on here. You click on buy at Udemy, and that'll give you the $50 off. Thanks.